Welcome to Patient-Centered Care, Activated Patients. This is Lecture A, Do-It-Yourself Medicine. In recent years, there have been shifts in the relationship between patients and physicians. Patients have become more active and involved in their own health. This unit discusses the concepts of what has been referred to as do-it-yourself medicine, the quantified self, and mHealth, as examples of how activated patients are beginning to manage their own health. The objectives for this unit, Activated Patients, are to bring a global perspective to do-it-yourself, that is, DIY medicine, and describe the factors influencing its expansion. Discuss the impact of DIY medicine on both clinical practice and clinical research. Discuss the potential promise and peril of the changes that DIY medicine will bring to healthcare, and discuss the role of the quantified self and mobile health applications in person centered care. The term patient has changed over time as different conceptions of the physician patient relationship have evolved. Current language speaks of healthcare providers, for example, who interact with healthcare consumers. Do it yourself medicine represents another stage in the transformation of patients to patient customers, to patient clients, to patient consumers, to patient self providers. Ultimately, it is medicine where patients research, select, acquire, and institute therapy or treatment and log their own output measures autonomously. DIY medicine is increasingly common due to multiple trends including the availability of online diagnostics, more sophisticated consumer health products, digital health or mobile health medical apps, community-based support and education groups, and digital clinical research tools and crowdsourcing. We will look at each trend in more depth and present examples of how technology is affecting each area. What is common among these different trends is that they all involve some degree of shifting responsibility for a patient's health care away from the physician and increasingly to patients themselves. Let's start by discussing some of the approaches to health care at a distance. Remote diagnostic and treatment modalities have led to a change in the location of care. Just as ambulatory medicine became more and more based on face-to-face -face visits in the physician's office rather than the patient's home, there are now technologies that are changing the nature of the face-to-face -face visits as well as the location. Telemedicine, as defined by the industry journal Health Affairs, is the use of technologies to remotely diagnose, monitor, and treat patients. Telehealth is the application of technologies to help patients manage their own illnesses through improved self-care and access to education and support systems. While traditional telemedicine has been similar to face-to-face -face medicine, except that the visit was done at a distance, other approaches are more similar to social media applications. HealthTap is a web-hosted healthcare platform and an example of the increasing sophistication of telemedicine. Using HealthTap, patients can communicate with physicians directly, a virtual concierge practice, via text or video chat from anywhere in the world. Other unique elements of the platform include HealthTap U, where medical students can craft answers to patient questions and receive feedback from providers. Another part of HealthTap is called RateRx. RateRx asks doctors to rate the clinical effectiveness of a drug from one to five stars based on their clinical experience. Another feature is Curbside Consult, which allows a physician to broadcast a question to other physicians on the network. These new approaches have broadened the traditional physician-patient relationship, as well as the collegial relationships between healthcare care providers. Here are some examples across the different domains of digital health. The Partners Healthcare Congestive Heart Failure Study consisted of in-home monitoring of weight, blood pressure, 
heart rate, and pulse oximetry. The data was uploaded daily to a central database where decision attention. Nurses could thus target their interventions. Hospital readmissions were reduced by 44% versus the usual method of care. Three to four nurses cared for a panel of 250 patients. Compare that with a certified home care agency where a nurse would typically care for four to six patients daily. The program generated $10 million in savings over a six-year period. Another example is what is being done at the VA. The Veterans Administration Care Coordination Home Telehealth Program initially covered 17,025 participants across six chronic diseases, among them diabetes and depression. This program continues to grow, with almost 120,000 veterans participating by 2012. There was high patient satisfaction reported and a 25% decrease of bed days of care and a 19% decrease of hospital admissions versus the usual care. There was also a savings of almost $2,000 per patient. Increasingly, health services that were traditionally accessible only to clinicians are targeted and directly available to consumers. 23andMe is a consumer-driven genetic service that provides reports that are stated to meet FDA standards for being clinically and scientifically valid. One example of these reports is the Carrier Status Report, which allows a client to see if they carry one genetic variant associated with an illness. This would allow parents to understand their odds of transmission of specific illnesses to their children. 23andMe also allows clients to compare their results with other users, such as family members. Users are given the opportunity to participate in research by answering online surveys and agreeing to share their genomic data. Services such as 23andMe raise important challenges in the typical clinician-patient relationship. How is the information interpreted or used by clinicians? Is it reliable enough for clinicians to make conclusions from it? And how do they bill for their time interpreting data from such services? Where should the data reside? What is the patient's role in interpreting the data, requesting action on its findings, and so forth? New technologies and newly empowered patients raise challenges to the conventional dynamics of a clinician-patient relationship that are, as of yet, unaddressed. There are many domains of digital health, from accessing online information to the utilization of software and wearable sensor technology to help a user track and achieve healthcare goals. These are commonly referred to as telehealth or mHealth over mobile devices, and both may be thought of as connected health. devices is expected to increase by more than $50 billion by 2018. However, some populations are underrepresented. Only 18% of older adults and 44% of blacks or Hispanics use smartphones. Over time, it is likely that more of the underrepresented groups will be using these devices. Using online health information sites, such as WebMD, patients can investigate symptoms and work toward diagnostic and therapeutic impressions. Online health reviews, like ZocDoc, allow patients to search for providers by specialty, zip code, or even accepted insurance, and schedule appointments. Patients can also review and add provider ratings. Mobile health tracking websites and apps like MyFitnessPal Track caloric consumption and exercise on the go to help with weight management. Many such applications exist and involve and motivate users to achieve their goals. Wearable sensors, such as the Fitbit family of devices and the Jawbone,
are just some of the many available consumer-level activity sensors to help users monitor their activity, sleep, and other personal health goals. Entries into this market are frequent and are expanding rapidly. Community-based support groups and community education groups exist across the spectrum of DIY medicine, focusing on all aspects of care and research. These groups are playing critical roles in the DIY medicine movement, galvanizing interest and support from both the public and medical communities. These groups have also found financial support for enhancing the available research tools, such as biobanks, and clinical data repositories, and consumer information across many conditions. Patient communities have the potential to drive research efforts, challenging the research community to bring advances to patients, particularly in the case of lethal illnesses, such as ALS. Patients Like Me allows for condition-specific tracking of health and symptoms, as well as connecting individuals with the same illness and providing the opportunity to participate in research. A 2011 study in Nature Biotechnology used data from one of these communities and found that lithium therapy did not impact progression of ALS. A collaboration between the rheumatoid disease patient community known as Creaky Joints and the University of Alabama at Birmingham resulted in the Creaky Joints and Arthritis Power Patient Powered Research Network that is building tools for patients to track and learn more about their conditions and empowering members to participate in research. Cure Together provides access to millions of ratings comparing the real-world performance of treatments across a growing number of conditions. In January of 2016, there were 637 conditions included in its database. These ratings are entered by individuals currently under treatment, sharing real data on how their illness is being affected by different treatments. Pseudoxanthoma elasticum, or PXE, is a genetic disease. PXE International has raised funds to establish a research registry, created blood and tissue banks, and has spurred peer-reviewed research into this condition. The Mayo Clinic created a database and biobank of blood specimens of patients with spontaneous coronary artery dissection and their relatives using social media tools like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. There are increasing calls that federally funded research data be publicly accessible to search, retrieve, and analyze, both in the U.S. and abroad. In 2013 and 2015, the Fair Access to Science and Technology Research, or FASTER, Act was introduced in the U.S. Congress. The European Union has also called for its member states to pass policies to ensure digital accessibility for research data funded publicly. This has led to more interest in digital data repositories. There are a growing number of publicly available digital data repositories driven by universities, healthcare centers, big pharma, and patients themselves. Many point to the need to share data to spur scientific advances sharing that may be hampered by traditional research processes. Other efforts go beyond static data repositories and aim to create a data commons where researchers can collaboratively develop new and creative ways to analyze available data. Populating these repositories often relies on social media, crowdsourcing, and other non-traditional means of patient recruitment. Harvard's Personal Genome Project invites willing participants to share and donate their genome and health data for research. The Patient-Centered Clinical Research Network, or PCORnet, consists of clinical data research networks located in health centers, hospitals, and so forth, and patient-powered research networks such as patient advocacy groups. PCORnet is funded by the Patient-Centered Clinical Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI, which was established as part of the 2010 Affordable Care Act. As described by NIH Director Francis Collins, 
PCORnet was established by PCORI to provide unprecedented opportunity to streamline clinical trials, empower patients, and build a solid foundation for personalized medicine. Patients Like Me has over 380,000 members that track and share health data to help researchers, other patients, pharmaceutical companies, regulators, nonprofits, and so forth accomplish their goals. How do these data repositories change patients' lives? Do they influence their health outcomes? And how do they impact the physician-patient relationship? The answer to many of these questions is still unclear. Activated patients that fight their illnesses as individuals through health care and contribute their data to research to help others with these illnesses is a new paradigm. Technology has enabled the capture of valuable data outside the care setting, and these data may indeed profoundly impact an individual's relationship with their illness. Newly empowered patients may take a more active role in treatment discussions with clinicians. They may drive the prioritization of research through selecting specific projects for data sharing and may open previously unavailable personalized care options. All of these possibilities will become clear as newly available volumes of data advance science. Sharing of personal data, such as genetic data or medication effectiveness data, via freely available electronic platforms, provides data access to more patients and more researchers than ever before. The open nature of these approaches may foster an environment of collaborative crowdsourced discovery, with some platforms already encouraging shared problem solving. DIY medicine also empowers patients to participate in their own health care and in the clinical research process, encouraging the involvement of the most important stakeholders. The benefits are both personal, self-efficacy, and also benefit the community at large as advocacy and enthusiasm from patients can bring needed support to researchers, which in turn will benefit the patients themselves. In addition, data now available from outside traditional care settings and in volumes not previously accessible may unlock previously unavailable personalized approaches to care that we cannot envision today. There are certainly some risks from DIY technologies for clinical care. DIY medicine can potentially reduce costs if patients stay healthier and take more responsibility for their health. However, it might also increase costs if utilization increases unnecessarily due to patients' misunderstanding of information. As these new models increase, more research will be needed to monitor their effects on costs health outcomes, and utilization. Other challenges involve incorporating all these new sources of data into our current healthcare processes. How will DIY information from mobile apps and wearable sensors be validated? How will it find its way into the electronic health record to maximize benefit without further overloading alert-fatigued providers? DIY research presents opportunities to accelerate the process of discovery, but may also pose risks of unproven therapies to vulnerable individuals. How will we standardize the scientific methods of such experiments to maximize generalizability? This concludes Lecture A, DIY Medicine. In summary, DIY medicine is the end product of several trends. The increasing availability of online and remote diagnostic and treatment methods, more sophisticated consumer health products, a variety of digital health and mobile health and medical apps, growing use by patients of community-based support and education groups, and new approaches to research, including digital clinical research tools and crowdsourcing. Changes in each of these areas, in many cases brought about by technological innovation, are changing the way patients interact with the healthcare industry and are powering the trend of DIY medicine. The sum of these changes is leading to a very different consumer who is empowered, 
knowledgeable, and participatory in affecting changes in healthcare delivery and discovery.